Now we are ready to find the average case efficiency. Yep. In C.1, we talk about you know, the reason behind it, why we need to use some average case efficiency to describe the overall efficiency. Yep. So this one, uh, I will show you how to do it. Yep. All right. Yeah. So for this question, uh, here we have all these m plus one cases. Okay. Yeah. So here you can see total. There are total m plus one cases. Yeah. So when you want to combine all these m plus one cases, you need to find the best way to combine them. Uh, the fairest way to combine them okay yeah so what's the best way yeah we know each case has some contribution to the overall efficiency right yeah some cases may have more contributions than other cases yeah yeah could be different yeah so we need to factor in all those you know different percentage contributions. Contribution with different percentages. Okay, yeah. So here we need to make some assumptions. Yeah. Otherwise, we cannot do the analysis. So we have to make some appropriate assumptions here. Yeah. Assume that these cases have same probability. Yeah. So the first n cases, these n cases, we do not have any information about these n cases. Which case appears more than other cases? We don't have that kind of information. So a reasonable assumption is they have the equal possibilities to appear in the input data yeah. Yeah. equal opportunities e yeah. that's our first assumption yeah. for the first in cases we assume they have the equal opportunities same probability yeah if, if we use the probability theory basic probability theory so we say they have the same probability yeah, so here, then we need to, you know, do some appropriate assumption on the probability. Yeah. Uh, here we consider two, these two subcases. So the first one, the index case, because the function returns a valid index. Yeah. The function returns a valid index. The second one, the function returns negative one value. It's not valid index. So we know it's special meaning. So that is the, you know, no match case. Yep. All right. Then we need to know what is the probability for the index case? What is the probability for than no match case. Yeah. Yeah, here we assume the probability for the index case is p with p between 0 and 1. Yeah. Yeah, so that's you know based on the probability theory. Yeah. A valid probability p should be in this range between 0 and 1. Yeah. Then the negative one case, because that's the complementary part. Yeah. We know the total probability must be one. Total probability must be one, 100%. Yeah. So then the complementary part to that P probability, so that is M minus one minus P probability. Okay, all right. 
So then a question, how to get that P, right? Yeah. So you make assumption for that P, but we need a specific value for that P. How do you get that? You can not assume some random number here between zero and one, right? Yeah. So you have to get that P in the right way. Yeah. So here I can, you know, give you two ways to find a P. The first way, do statistics based on the history data. So when we apply this search algorithm on our data, so we may have some history data, right? So you just use your history data, do statistics, and make prediction. So you, we can use the P from your history data. So that's one way. Another, so if you do not use the history data, or your history data is not reliable, or missing, or corrupted, yeah, for whatever reason, you cannot use the history data, but you can use the current dynamic data, okay? Current dynamic data. Yeah, so when the, every time a, a data item comes in, you do statistics. So you estimate that peak, okay? Yeah, so at the beginning, your estimate may not be very good, but after some time, yeah, so when the data flows in in a stable way, yeah, very stable, then your estimation is better and better. Yeah. All right, so here we just assume we have a good probability p-value, so we can do the average here. All right, yeah. Next, yeah. Now we can do analysis. We can do the calculation, the average. Okay. All right. So the average here we are going to do, we call a weighted average. Weighted average. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the best way to combine all the cases using the weighted average. Yeah. All right. So here, because we have two subcases, the first subcase, the index case, we treat it as the first subcase. The second, the negative one case, no match case. No. For the first one, because we assume the same probability, so when we combine them, we just take the arithmetic mean. Yeah, so we add them together and divide it by n. Yeah, that's only when we make assumption all these cases have the same probability. We can do that. Yeah. Because you can imagine each case inside the first subcase, they have 1 over n probability. Okay? 1 over n probability. All right. Then you can still use the weighted average way to put them together. What's that? Because one comparison, it's corresponding weight, the probability 1 over m plus two comparison, it's corresponding probability also 1 over m, and so on. Then, n comparison, it's probability also 1 over m. So then, you combine them, put together using the weighted average, that's the same as this arithmetic mean. All right. So in this way, we find the average case efficiency for the first subcase. What is the average case efficiency for the second subcase? It's n. Because there is only one case. One case you take average. Same number. Yeah. Now, we are ready to do the weighted average. So we should find their corresponding weights. Yeah. So the weight for the first subcase yeah, here, yeah, P. Okay, yeah, probability. That's the weight we use to do the weighted average. 
and the weight for the second subcase, 1 minus p. It's corresponding probability, yeah, 1 minus p. Yeah. Now, we're ready to combine them using the weighted average weight. Yeah. So this is the formula, okay? Yeah. So the first part, you know, average for the subcase. Then the second part, weight. Yeah. So then the average for the second subcase, then its weight. Yeah, put them together. So you get this formula. Okay. All right. Next, yeah, so I want to go one more step. Yeah. So in our computer science analysis, most of the time we do estimate. Yeah. Most of the time we do not use precise numbers. Yeah. The reason is simple. Yeah. Two basic reasons. The first one, the exact number is very hard to find. Yeah. So in real world situation, yeah. so many times it's very hard to get exact numbers, yeah. accurate, precise numbers. It's hard. So we have to use approximate numbers. Yeah. That's one. The second situation is sometimes it's possible to get exact number. Yeah. So we have formulas to get exact number. But even it's possible because the form of the exact representation could be very complicated. So in that situation, we would like to use a simpler, much simpler representation, but approximate. Yeah. Approximate expression. Yeah. Yeah. So here we may consider approximate expression. We want to drop some minor terms then we only select the major term and uh, drop the minor terms. So that's the way we do the approximation. Yeah. Here let me show you. Yeah. First when we look at this expression it's relatively complicated, right? Yeah, so relatively complicated. So we want to make it as simple as possible, but we still, we want to keep the expression as close to the original expression as possible, okay? Yeah, so we don't want to have a very bad approximation. Yeah, so here, so let's, before we yeah. Uh, so let me show you uh, how to simplify it. Yeah. yeah. Because some students uh, in class want, want me to give more details. So here, let me explain the details. Yeah. All right. The this first part. Yeah. We need to, you know, multiply through, in this way. Okay. Yeah. So one half. First, p multiplied through p times n plus p times 1. Okay? Yeah. Then, 1 half multiplied through 1 half pm plus 1 half p. So that's the, the first part. The second part, we need to, you know, the second part, we need to, you know, m. This we do not multiply through. Yeah, because this m, n is the variable. Yeah. Other than n, everything else is constant. Yeah. So we want to, you know, understand this formula around this n uh, variable. Yeah. So we, you know, yeah, everything organized around n variable. Yeah. All right. So the second term, if we add together, yeah, add together, yeah, so we get this 1 minus p plus 1 half p, so we will get 1 minus 1 half p times m plus 
on half P. Okay? All right. So that is our yeah, formula rewriting. Okay? Formula rewriting. Okay. After that, yeah. So we we get a two terms here. We get two terms. And the minor term, this one half P, we treat it as a minor term. We treat it as the minor term. So then the ma this is the major term. So we use this major term to approximate the whole formula. Okay? Yeah. So here I introduce another concept called the dominant term. Yeah. So that major term, yeah, we drop something, we drop the minor term. So this is the dominant term. The first time I introduced this concept. Yeah. Why we call it dominant term? Because this term dominates all the other terms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the detailed explanation, how dominates it is, how dominates this term can do, right? So I will explain in the module two. So I will explain this term dominates all the other terms in some reasonable way. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but here I can give you some idea about the dominance of this term. Okay. Yeah. Think about uh, we have major terms, minor terms. We throw away minor terms so to appro approximate the original expression. Yeah. If the minor term only takes one percent of the total amount. Do you feel okay to throw it away? Only 1%. Not too big, not too much, right? Not, not much loss. Yeah. So 1%. Most people may feel okay. Yeah. Then, if even smaller than 1%, how about 0.00001%? Do you feel all right to throw it away? Yeah. Then, yeah. Nobody would have any problem to throw it away, right? Yeah, if the minor term only takes 0.001% of the total amount. Yeah. So yeah, so you can easily throw it away. Yeah. Then in module two we will show yeah, actually the minor part would be much much smaller than that. 0.001 percent okay yeah so we will use calculus to get that yeah but that would happen when n is very large yeah. so that would happen when n very large yeah yeah because in computer algorithms when n relatively small we don't worry yeah. we know our computers our modern computers are very powerful. It can process the data relatively small, easily. Yeah. But the problem is, if the data size is very large, too big, yeah, then our computer processing could have some trouble okay so that's something we need to worry yeah. so we usually we consider n very very large yeah. okay yeah all right so we leave that analysis in module two uh, using calculus okay. all right yeah next now so we can you know complete yeah. so this c.2 part yeah the dominant term gives a good approximation. Yeah. So, if you have the approximation as good as 99.9999%, do you feel good? Yeah. So, you will feel very good. Okay? Yeah. The minor terms can be ignored without significant loss. So, it's okay with a throw away. 
those minor terms. Okay? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we finish uh, part C.2.